Sometimes forex trading is a wild and woolly place to be. That's why Hugh's here. To pose your questions to Walter, the naked forex guy. Hugh's got questions and Walter's got the answers. Here at the Truth About FX Podcast. Hey Walter, somebody asks, what what if a signal or a pattern is not on a support and resistance zones and they still want to take the trade anyway? <laughs> Fear of missing out anyone? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. right. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So so look, this is this is this is pretty common. It's it's usually you know, it's helpful to ask yourself, why? Why do I want to take this? Like, if you have all your rules written out, you've back tested all your rules through Forex Tester or whatever, and it's not like, you know what I mean? It's not really worth, like, then you, then you see the chart and you want to do something different. Why is it that you have the system that you've defined, that you've back tested, that you have your stats for, and yet you want to do something different? There's, there's a whole, like, you can go down that rabbit hole. Why are you wanting to do this? Why, where, where is this coming from? But the other part of it, is you're prob you know you're probably wanting to take more trades. You're probably getting a bit antsy. You haven't had a trade in a while, and so you want to take it. I found in my testing because I looked at this that in most cases you're um, gonna run into a really bad win rate if you just take every single kangaroo tail on the chart. So that's why I like to take kangaroo tails as an example, uh, using the kangaroo tail as an example on support and resistance. So. You know, I don't really want to do anything other than, you know, because here's the thing. My whole philosophy is this. The market remembers where it's returned, where it's bounced off of in the future. It will it will likely bounce off that in the, again in the future. The other thing it'll do is it'll go up to that level. It'll kind of slow down and get really quiet and then it'll break through it. So when I see the market get to these support resistance zones, my question is this. Is it going to break through the zone or is it going to reverse at this zone? And that's basically it. And so I have these patterns and these patterns I've found to test. I've tested them, found to be reliable. And a lot of these I've learned from uh, Thomas Bolkowski. So that was kind of the seed for a lot of the stuff I did. And, you know, we'll link that up in the show notes, the Encyclopedia of Chart Patterns by Thomas Bolkowski, a great book. Uh, I noticed, uh, you know, that his patterns were interesting and that he had looked at stock data. So they, so I said, well, I wonder if these same things happen in uh, Forex uh, markets. And it turns out a lot of them do. So that's where I would go, you know, if you want ideas for patterns. But the, the main thing here is I'm just trying to answer the question. Is it going to reverse or is it going to break through? And the pattern tells me whether it will. So if you're taking the pattern and it's not on support and resistance, you're doing something different. Because it's not really like to me, the market's not at a critical juncture, right? It's just kind of in the middle of, you know, between support and resistance. And who knows what it wants to do? It can float around there forever, as we, we can all see on the charts. So to me, it's really those two pieces that are critical. It, is the market at a critical place? And if it is, is it going to reverse here or is it going to? break out and bust through. And the patterns help me identify which one is more likely. And a lot of times, in fact, most of the time, the market will get to one of these support and resistance zones and it doesn't have a pattern that I earmarked as, as reliable. So I just kind of let it go and say, well, I don't have a trade. So, so that's, I guess you have to get used to this idea of not having a trade uh, if you're going to trade this way and, 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 you know, feeling like you have to take a trade or you want to take a trade, even though it's on a, not on a support resistance zone, cause it's on a really, you know, it's a really good pattern. That's cool, but it's, it's just a different, you're, you're, you're operating on a different set of beliefs than I am, which is, you know, support and resistance is critical. So maybe you can get something to work there, but I haven't really found a lot of things that, that translate into, you know, just kind of open area on the chart. So mm -hmm. that's what I found anyway. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. I think, I think Tim Sykes um, had a good concept. He was like, he says that he thinks of himself as a retired trader and he's only going to come out of trading if he has something that's really, really sweet. Yeah. So I think that's kind of what you're saying, right? Like you just yeah. want to be sure that it's one of one of your uh, A plus setups. Yeah, exactly. I've heard it um, the other way. I, don't, I can't remember where I heard this from, but someone was talking about it in a very similar way. He said, it's like you're, you're hunting lions or whatever. It's like you're in the, you're in the, uh, not that I'm a hunter, but like, like you're in the grass, you know, you're in the grass in the savannah and you're sitting there all day, you know, looking through your scope and you're just waiting for the right moment for the lion or whatever, the gazelle or whatever to move into the, 
into an area where you can where you can pick it off, you know, and that's basically trading to me. It's a whole lot of waiting or, mm-hmm. you know, like a fisherman or whatever. You're just waiting around for the right time. So, yeah, so I, I agree. That's a really great way to look at it as being a retired trader. And, and you know, the other thing um, is is to look at yourself as like a as like a back tester. You spend a lot of time back testing in Forex tester mm. and then you come out of, you know, back testing when the markets are ready, you know, that sort of thing. So I like to look at a lot of different ideas and a lot of them aren't very good and they don't work out very well. But, you know, that's kind of fun for me is to look at all these different ideas in Forex tester and say, okay, well, I wonder if this would work or what if we did this or what if we changed that? So there's a lot of like the creativity in trading to me is in the testing part, the testing phase. That's where I get a lot of satisfaction because, you know, obviously, you know, trading is pretty boring. You're just kind of waiting around. And even when you're in a trade, you can, I mean, for me anyway, I have to wait for it to tell me what is it going to do? Is it going to take my money or give me some money? You know, that sort of thing. So, yeah. Mm, yeah. Keeps you out of trouble, huh? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Walter. Thanks. Thanks. 